While we do not know the nature of the announcement yet, we were able to talk with Dr. John Grotzinger, the mission scientist for Mars Science Laboratory, to discuss what was done with the soil and where the sample came from. You know, it looks like a, a typical kind of a, uh, a sand dune. It's a little small sand dune, you know, 10 centimeters high kind of thing. But it's a, it's a good target to dig into, and, and so we, we scoop into it, and then, and then we do two things with it. One is we mostly clean out the, the Chimera sample processing system because it's got a lot of exposed surface area, and it's dirty. So we flush it with the sample, and we shake it around, move it around, then we dump it out. Then we take another scoop of soil, put that in, shake it around, dump it out. Then we take the third one, and then the third one finally goes into the Chemin instrument because it's clean enough for Chemin, and we got some nice data from that. And then we do a fourth one that we scooped, and then we threw that one away. And now we get our fifth scooped sample that we'll then process and dump into the SAM instrument. So with that, we'll have analyzed the soil with the ChemCam laser, uh, with the APXS instrument, uh, chemical sensor, uh, we'll have analyzed it with Chemin X-ray diffraction, and now we'll have looked at it with, with SAM. Even as Curiosity departed Rock Nest, the sample was being analyzed. What Chemin showed us is that the soil has two basic components in it, one of which is our true minerals that, that have a, 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 an ordered arrangement of atoms that, that give you a very particular crystal structure. And then there's a bunch of stuff in there that's X-ray amorphous, meaning that it, it, it doesn't have any kind of orderly structure to it, or the orderly elements are so small that they, that they don't diffract X-ray uh, beams. And it's a big question as to what this stuff is. And if we get the APXS analysis of the soil, we can get some sense for what it is. And then you go back and you look at the Chemin data, and you look quantitatively at how much stuff was actually crystalline, and you know what minerals they are, and you know then what the chemical formula is for the mineral. So then you're able to extract all of those elements that represent those minerals, and then what you're left with is the unknown chemistry of the X-ray amorphous material. And so if we can take that, that fraction of the sample and then dump it out onto our observation tray, and then put the APXS down on top of it, we can get the chemistry of that fraction that's less than 150 microns that also includes the X-ray amorphous stuff. And then we take that same stuff and we dump that into SAM, and SAM heats it up to eight, 900,000 degrees, and as you do that, the rock decomposes and, break down and breaks down, and then the volatiles come off. Let's say that there's a mineral or there's some material in it that uh, is below the detection limit, of Chemin, which is a couple percent. Let's say it's carbonate. And so that, that mineral, you know, if it's uh, something made out of calcite, it would be calcium plus CO3. So when you take the rock, it's rock hard, you heat it up, it breaks down, and what happens is, is that, that that calcium carbonate produces carbon dioxide. So we'll drive that off and we'll see that. And uh, so it comes off as a gas. We'll collect that gas and then we can analyze it and we can determine that it's CO2, and we can also measure the isotope ratio of the carbon. It's an amazing amount of stuff that we can do with this rover. We can actually figure out what this really fine-grained stuff is uh, that's swirling all the way around Mars.